<laughs> I feel like a I, I feel like a, a mini rock star right now because my uh, my nephews are over here. They're nine, seven years old, and the nine year old, you know, he he gets on like you know YouTube. You know, he know mm -hmm. he's into all all that crazy young and stuff. And uh, and I told him, I showed him like some of the videos I have on YouTube mm -hmm. and right now. And I went out there. I was like, hey guys, just let's just keep it down. Some you know I'm about to record, and he was like. You're recording like on YouTube and like your videos. I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, people waiting. He's like, can we watch? I'm like, no, nah, I, I got someone waiting right now. He's like, oh, oh, guys, <laughs> just close the door. Yeah, it's. Uh, I have an eight and eleven year old, and they are enamored by both mine and like right. I, I'll, I mean, I end up on a ton of things, and they think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm just like I'm like kids. No, no signatures, no paparazzi, no pictures. Maybe just one picture, kids. It's okay. <laughs> This episode is presented by OIT VoIP. Enhance your client's communication abilities with our VoIP solution, featuring integrated billing, on-demand training, and live U.S. support. Collaborate seamlessly with Microsoft Teams integration and put your entire phone system in your pocket with MobileX. Improve your offerings and increase profitability with reliable service for one-tenth of the average MSP acquisition cost. To learn more, visit OIT.co or dial 844-CALL-OIT. Uh, Jason... Thank yeah. you so much for being my guest, man. Being a guest here at 38 at 38. Let me go ahead and intro this up. Yeah. Hello, everybody out there in computer world. This is 38 at 38. My name is Aaron Bolton, and we talk about the most ridiculous job stories. And I've got a wonderful guest today, which is Mr. Jason Slagle. There's the intro. So now we can just talk like regular humans, which is great. Um, I practice <laughs> that. I go to sleep every night <laughs> practicing that. Awesome, Jason. Thank you for being on. I appreciate it. We yeah. We don't. We we've never really talked. Talked. We've we've no. like <clears throat> closely crossed over. Like I, yeah. I think my closest connection to you is, uh, you know, Kyle Jackson, right? Yes. Yeah. And Tech Bar. I think you were on a Tech Bar, right? And I think I right, was right. not. I think I ended up on screen for a little bit. But I think we're like in parallel orbits. Right. We the just only... keep crossing paths. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, really? I was with Connectwise for a long time, and. You know, so just being in that realm and MSP, you know, yeah. sphere, you know, we got, but yeah, Kyle's my bestie and he talks highly of you, like really highly, like the, the times of I, like, like, no, no, no joke. I, no have, to, I have to try harder. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Jason, if you could tell us a little about yourself, uh, where yeah. you're working, what you do now. Yeah, I'm uh, Jason Slagle. I'm president of CWR Inc. We're an MSP in the Toledo, Ohio area. Been doing this a long time. I have a ton of stories. Uh, I got I think I got a pretty good one for us today. It's uh, it's one I've hinted at and told parts of, but I don't think I've ever told the whole thing, and it's pretty crazy. Awesome. So, so let me ask. So, how long? And I know I I didn't send this beforehand, but how long were you like? Have you been working? You know, like what, what was like? How old were you when you got your first job? Uh, I have always uh, worked in uh, IT or some sort of computer-related uh, field, right? And uh, I've been doing it since 1997. Uh, so what is that, 26 years, I think, this year? If I can math in my head pretty well. Yeah, yeah. so a while. That's, that's, yeah, that is a while. Now, did, did you have any, like, any jobs in high school, anything before the professional realm? No, I was, I started my first job in high school was tech support at an ISP that it, ironically enough is what CNWR was born out of. I mean, I left, uh, I spent a, a stint in enterprise world, which is where the story for today comes from. Uh, I spent a time at a couple startups, independently consulted, worked at the university, kind of made my way throughout, you know, figuring out what I like and what I don't like and that I'm kind of a terrible employee uh, and kind of made my way back to uh, the the roots of it all when I, I got called and basically asked to come back at one point. So I'm, I'm back. I've been back uh, CNWR now for oh, 11 years this year, right? So it's it's been a little bit of a run. Dude, that's a cool full story. A like full yeah. circle story, man. Yeah. That's really going, going right back to the roots. So, all right. So I'm excited about this story today. All right. I, I'm excited about all these stories because really that's what I, I keep realizing. This is like the the reason for this podcast is everyone mm -hmm. has a bad job story. Everyone has oh, the yeah. word. The more I have these conversations, the more it just 
solidifies my head. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They, they no one, even like the lamest, it's still the worst yeah. to them. It's still the worst to them, you know? So let, let's hear what you got going. What's your yes. worst, most ridiculous uh, job? Yeah, story? this is pretty crazy. So I, I spent, I don't know, probably about six, yeah, maybe four years working at uh, TNS Global, right? So we were, uh, I think it's broken up now, but I think it was the second largest market research firm in the US. And uh, I think I held most of the job roles there in IT other than Windows System Administrator. Uh, I never ran Windows servers, uh, but I, I was a networking guy for a while, uh, uh, storage guy for a little bit. Uh, and most of the time I spent there, I spent as a Unix admin, right? So we had a pretty diverse set of Unix systems uh, everywhere from uh, some Linux machines that were new that I was bringing up and provisioning running Oracle and a number of other things, uh, as well as uh, some old DEC Unix stuff, both running VMS, which, I mean, that should put, I mean, that's what Vaxes run, right? So that should put me as like an ancient dinosaur there. Right. I did not run the Vaxes. Uh, right. I ran the digital Unix version of it uh, and <clears throat> some HPU Xboxes. And... Uh, it is coming into the 4th of July weekend. And I, at the time, was actually running sound for my friend's cover band. Uh, and they had a very important gig. They were playing like our local municipalities fireworks, right? So I had to run sound for them, which was awesome, by the way. No, uh, no, no. Wait, pause. Let's yeah. dig a little into that. Let's talk yeah. a little about that. What's up with yeah. that? What, what I, I don't know. It? It was a little local uh, cover band called Islington, a really good friend of mine. Uh, they had they were a bluegrass band, and then uh, he joined a different band, and they were a cover band. And I started hanging out with them while they would practice. And at some point or another, I just sat down at the board and just started pushing levels around a little bit. And I got pretty good at it. So uh, for a while, when they played out, I don't know, probably six or eight months until I got too busy, I'd go with them, and I'd run audio for a local cover band, uh, which is cool. – you chilled out for a little bit and played around. You became a, an audio engineer. Sound yeah, engineer. I, done. It, yeah, it's, I, dude, I'm a general purpose nerd, right? If it's right? if it's nerdy, I've probably dabbled in it at one point. Uh, I mean, there's I was a dial. You're turning it. Yeah, it was pretty good at it. I, I mean, there's. I tell Ray that, like, when he does tech bar, it's like, dude, I can help with that stuff, right? Like setting up audio in a hotel room that we're trying to use to record tech bar is way easier than trying to mic up right. drums in a concrete courtyard, right? right like it's, right. This, is, this is easy. Uh, right. So it's some experience there, but <clears throat> that comes into the story here in a little bit. I'm sitting there and suddenly I get a call. Uh, we had a couple locations. So TNS was born out of two companies in the U.S. It was born out of a company called NFO, uh, National Family Opinion, uh, out of Toledo, the Toledo, Ohio area where I live. And it was born out of a second company called uh, InterSearch, which was headquartered in Horsham, Pennsylvania. They did full service market research. They did the online stuff. They sent out the like Nielsen type envelopes with a couple bucks in them and most importantly to the story they did something called katie to us computer aided telephone interviewing right so they okay. would they would have a machine and an auto dialer that would call you and you've all everyone's gotten these calls right it's like a person doing a survey they get it pops up on the machine the questions are supposed to answer right blah 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 everything goes through so this is just a couple of days before the fourth of july weekend and I get a call from my counterpart, right? So there were two of us Unix system admins, right? It was me on the on the uh, Toledo side of it. And then I had a counterpart named Paul on the Horsham side of it. I get a call from Paul and I get a call from Paul's boss or my boss, I guess at the same time. In the Horsham data center, they had installed a mini split, like an air conditioner, right? To cool this thing. They had installed it above the computer room. And if you've ever had an air conditioner at all, they, they leak water, right? Yeah, like you get yeah, water yeah. that comes out of them. And this air conditioner had a drip tray, right? As one would. This drip tray was located right above the server rack. So nope. you can already see nope. where this is probably going. <laughs> nope. Oh, man. So like, Okay, it, no lie, yeah. no lie. All right, halfway through, just through this story, I'm like, yeah. okay, this is really techie. And I'm, I'm following, yeah. I'm following, because I don't get too techie, but I'm like, Oh no, I yeah. know where this is. Going. I've grew, I've grown up on yeah. a farm where I have where we just only have the inset units, in, and I'm like, yep. 
I, you don't do that on, if you don't put anything under a uh, AC vent that you don't want to get messed up or wet, right? Yeah. Let's yeah, so this thing, yeah. So this thing's got a drip tray, right? And at yeah. some point, I'm assuming I never really got the details of it, but I'm assuming that the drain on this drip tray clogged up uh, because it clearly filled with water, and at some point or another. Several gallons will. of water. They all will. Yeah, oh, 100%, 100% they, will. they will. I mean, 100%. that's what happens. You've seen <laughs> what grows no, in that water. There is no engineering feat yeah. that has come oh. to the point to say, we're going to fix this. Yeah. It's, no. it's going to happen. Yeah. So it it the drip tray filled up with water and basically collapsed out of the ceiling, pouring who knows how many gallons of water right on an HPUX, like old school unix like oh. server uh and it died uh and it 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 kicked off this like crazy crazy series event so i get a call right like so because the problem isn't that necessarily that you can't get do the katie stuff i mean that's a side effect of the fact that you're basically idling three or four hundred employees at this point because you can't right. call anybody uh yeah. so you know now the clock's ticking right so the cto which was in our office comes down and they're like trying to figure out what to do and at some point or another they decide that the proper course of action is they're not going to replace it we had a proper data center in our in our facility right they put me in the company minivan me of all people they, they give me the keys to a company car and send me to akron ohio about three hours away to pick up apparently there's some place you can just pick up these like boutique like special like it's basically like a commodore 64 but unix right these <laughs> things are old oh yeah yeah old they, they, they haven't been made like this type of hpux machine even in this was probably in 2007 it's not been made in 20 years right they just don't exist anymore so they found some company out of Akron that had them and they sent me in the van and I picked it up and I brought it back. It was sitting it, right next to the Tandy. Yeah, sitting probably. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, I don't know. Was, you get it like Vax's R Us or something. Uh, there's like one guy at the warehouse doesn't speak English, smokes a cigarette yeah. and he just, he, he does them all. He does them all. He probably does. It's crazy. So I, so I pick this, I pick this server up, right. And I get, I get it back at the same time. They put my counterpart uh, on a plane to Ohio with the backup tapes, right? Because this is like, there's no cloud backups. This is like 2007, right? Yeah. Like you're lucky to get, like most people oh, said dial up right. internet, right? And so you got there's no such these thing. Tapes. Everything is on DLT tapes. And if I, dug, if I had smart, I would have grabbed one because I have a bunch of them here. Uh, but yeah, digital linear tapes are about this big. They kind of look like a square eight track, right? Like uh, yeah, I'm but... I put it that way, right? They're bigger than, smaller than a VHS, bigger than like, yeah, uh, about as thick as a VHS. And he, so they put this guy on this plane and they bring him over. So I get the server back and uh, I don't know that much about HPUX. Right. Like I, I'm, I'm a Linux guy. Right. And I've been doing Linux forever. And I'm like, I'm passable at all these other OSs. But they, they bring my counterpart back. He lands with the tapes. He comes in. And it is at that moment in my life, I realized this is the slowest human being that uh -huh. has ever existed. Like he's like hunting and pecking on this keyboard. And it's like, oh, no, yo, coming into this he, every five minutes. He's like, I need a status update. I need a status update. Finally, I tell the CTO, like, look, man. I can work on this or I can talk to you and you get to pick which of these two things I'm going to do. Cause I can't do them both. Uh, and he, he finally goes away. Dude, how uh, nervous were you? That, that'd be so freaked out. Like no, I'm like, I okay, I, I, I barely know what I'm doing and yeah. I don't, I'm under the gun. No, you're yeah. good. It's no, I'm freaking out. I mean, I think at this point, so this, this thing failed, uh, sometime at probably, uh, 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 2 p.m. Right. And, and so by the time they get him on a plane and by the time I get back with the equipment, it's probably 8, 9 p.m. Uh, so we start working on this in earnest. I've been at the office already since, you know, 9 a.m. in the morning. I get an OS on, on the box, right? Because that was the easy part. But now I have to restore all this like weird stuff. Like this is like I, I'm, I am out of my element here. And so my counterparts got like this run book like basically a three ring spiral notebook with like all the oh. things he's got to do and he's tong, 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 tong. and it's it's just it's forever right and i so, love the fact that you're having to go through paper yeah you can just flip through paper to type and see what to I type mean, in 
this is insanity, right? So this guy, he's trying and he's trying his best. And, you know, eventually uh, we hit 20 hours. I'd been there 20 hours. We're still trying to get things restored. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, finally, my boss goes, I need you to go home and get some sleep. Yeah. Can you be back here in like five hours? So I drive home. I sleep for four hours, right? I, t- up 20 hours at that point, right? We worked on it pretty much all night. It was like four, I think three, four in the morning ish, right? So I'd been at the office since like 9 a.m. It's four in the morning. I finally go home. I sleep. I, I roll in. Uh, I roll back in at probably nine to 10 a.m. the next morning. Oh. And I keep going. And this guy, this guy is... He they kept him working, right? And he has made essentially no progress on this at all because he types like a, a 300 baud teletype from like the 80s. I mean, he just it's the slowest typer. So finally, I push him out of the way and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. So I, with a I'm lot of Google images of you just like, yeah, just cracking, I'm the like, fingers, dude, just, just let me do out. this. Uh, so with a lot of work, uh, I'm finally able to get, you know, pieces of this restored and, uh, we, we go through it, You know, I learned a lot. I, I get this really old slow guy out of my way. And over the course of probably, I think the next subsequent 16 ish hours again for the second day, uh, I finally get like the base level of this thing working so they can at least run one shift. Uh, oh so and no shifts have been running this no whole time? shifts has been running like two oh. days like and this is yeah and so they finally get to the point where we could bring 50 interviewers up online i had a bunch of work still left to do but i managed to finish it up like two hours before i had to be at sound check for the band i was running sound for so i literally <laughs> you know day one 20 hours go sleep four hours wake up day two you know smash through it and then like leave immediately and you know two hours later i uh, have to go run audio for my friend's cover band who had a national act that they were opening up for right so like oh, they've got man. like this giant 128 channel professional soundboard that i've never touched and uh and luckily uh, both things went off pretty well, and I learned a lot from the audio engineers from the the big the big thing. They gave me a bunch of pointers, so that was actually pretty cool. Uh, but I think that I think that tops it. I mean, I've got a ton uh, a ton of various crazy stories uh, well, at I this like particular is, place, but this one that one is probably the craziest. What I like is that uh, you know usually like anyone in 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 the music industry, you know they're they're tired. You know, if yeah. they're tired, it's because they've been partying, you know, yeah. oh yeah, last night you get there tired and they're like, oh, yeah. what happened? You're like server work, man. Yeah. <laughs> server work. Yeah. Um, so, it rained so from the beat. ceiling. Yeah, yeah, there was, yeah, not the only time that that company had stuff raining from the ceiling, but the worst time. So what was the other time? Uh, roofers clogged the roof drain and it was raining on the EPS. Like that, like. Fool yeah. me once. Like, like yeah, they I just put solid pan under everything. everything. Those poor roofers. They, they, those, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've been in, uh, yeah, I've been in, in uh, wet situations. That sounds weird, but that's another job. I don't know. Maybe we might get into that tonight. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for that story. Yeah. I appreciate your story. I want to pay you back with a story. Yeah. Uh, but first, we're going to take a break and hear this sponsored ad. Build the impossible at CompTIA ChannelCon 2023, running August 1st through the 3rd at the Venetian Resort in Las Vegas, Nevada. Join other technology innovators and peers to solve problems and create new opportunities in three days of learning, collaboration, and transforming your business and career. Speakers include Eric Anthony, Aaron Chernin, Vince Chrysler, Bob Coppage, and ChannelCon's 2023 keynote speaker, Mick Ebeling. Be inspired, build the impossible, this $1,200 value is yours at no cost when you register with promo code SBOIT23 or scan the QR code on your screen. And we're back. All right. we That was a great ad. You should buy four of them. Um, the, <laughs> we, we're here again. That's our million dollars. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't make the ads nor, nor your finances, sir. You just please make it happen <laughs> or, <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I can't, I can't say what Phil wrote. Nope. Job, Phil. No, it's okay. Say what Phil wrote. Thank you. 
Thank you. Ah, producer Phil. All right, Jason. So here's the part where my guest, Jason, will, yep. uh, he has been giving a list of quotes and each quote has uh, something to do with one of the jobs that I've had. So Jason, let's hear what that quote is. Yeah, I, this was really hard, but I think I'm going to roll with having smart friends is expensive. I really, really like this one. I was excited. I'm excited about this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, cause it gets it. All right. So it gets to, it gets into like more of my background. So, um, I grew up, so, oh, yay. I'm happy about this, man. Jason, thank you so much. This is all right. So, uh, so I grew up like a uh, farmish, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, it, we call it a farm, but really it was three acres of land that my grandfather bought right after world war two. And we just lived there and commercial grew up around us in industry. So like my, mm -hmm. for, like my street address was a, uh, is 50th street, which was an eight lane highway. Like that's, and oh. then my house. Yeah. That's, and then my house is wild. Right. So, but it was still kind of rural, you know? Yeah. And, um, so, I, and I was, and I was in gifted classes, right? So it was rule, rule, and I was in gifted. And, uh, so I was, so all my friends were like white, white uh -huh. and, and not even Spanish. Like it was, it was just rural area. Uh, because, and I said, because I'm Spanish, but I, it was, so, um, then I moved in when I was 12, I moved in with, uh, my mom, my mom lives uh in a place we call uh, the ghetto or she did she lived <laughs> in uh, the ghetto and it was rough so i was uh, that i was super uh i don't want to say nerdy but i mean the typical mm -hmm. 90s nerd <laughs> you know i mean i was i was the always the shortest one and always the heaviest one in, in class and always and i mean i, I was <laughs> going through this this mind meld of moving from the rural area to like the ghetto. I mean, I've said mm -hmm. this in, in a, oh, like, I think it was that year, that first year. I mean, I had a gun pulled on me at the bus stop. Yeah. Yeah. I say the generational trauma stops here, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no more. <laughs> so how, no, how I mean, does one would, get a gun pulled on him at a bus stop? <laughs> not from by not running away. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We're all at the, at the bus stop and I really don't know anyone. And, um, I was in seventh grade and the, uh, this one older brother of one of the kids who was at the bus stop as well. He was like 16 years old and he was just, you know, messing with all of us because he's mm -hmm. the older kid. Who's not at a bus stop because surprise, surprise, he's not going to school. And, then he started and he would come by and like mess with us sometimes. And then yeah. one day he just pulled out his gun and I not being social at all was just like looking down. And then I saw everyone feet. I just saw wow. And feet just take off. And I didn't know the protocol, you know, was to you run too. And I just looked up and a uh, gun. I turned the gun was in my face and he said, what you want to do Chico? And I right. said, nothing <laughs> like that was my response. <laughs> Is running an effective defense against guns? I feel like there's what? a whole song that talks about outrunning bullets. Right, but it worked for all the other kids. They <laughs> obviously knew what to do. <laughs> they grew up. They had that education. Yeah. I did not. I did not have that education. Uh, so I was like, this is great. And then he was like, whatever. And he was just joking, I guess, which is great. So that's what I'm dealing with. So I go, I go into this new school. And... I'm the, uh, I'm, and I'm going to get to classes and I'm in the neighborhood where we were bust in, right? Mm -hmm. So we were bust into another school and, uh, there was like none of the gifted classes that I was in had any of the people from my neighborhood. None of the people from my neighborhood were in any of the gifted classes. So I didn't make friends with anyone like my next door neighbor. That was it. But he got picked on all the time like me, but like the kids that, you know, I'm in classes with all day long. There's like maybe one or two in the whole neighborhood, right? Yep. So, um, so and so we didn't have, you know, money. My, my mom, you know, we were just barely making it by and everything. She, she a work beast, a workhorse. No, I'm not going to call her a workhorse. She's a beast. She's a beast of a woman. She is. <laughs> no, she's a she's an extreme hard worker. <laughs> so it was Aaron. I know, I know. My mom's going to hear this. So, um, 
So either way, so I'm just trying to paint that picture. So my friends at school, they lived in like the more in the suburbs, they lived in the suburbs. And, you know, at that time, my mind, I remember I was like, oh, they were rich, but you know, living in the suburbs, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh no, they're not, you know, they're just, you know, I can see that now, but from when I was a kid, I was like, oh, they're rich. So, um, my, uh, so anyways, they, they would go out, they were going out to the movies one, uh, one Saturday, I think it was. And, uh, and I was like, they're like, you coming to the movies there? And I was like, yes. Cause I didn't want to let them down. I wanted to go. Of course I didn't ask my mom cause I knew what the answer was going to be. I knew what they, so, um, uh, but I went to my mom on, um, Friday, it was probably Friday. And I said, Hey mom, go, we're going to, uh, the movies or my friends are going to the movies. Uh, can I have a ride? And she's like, yeah, you can have a ride. She goes, uh, are you going to go watch a movie? She's like, we don't have the money to go watch a movie. And I was like, ah, I was bummed. And I went to my room and I just thought for a little bit, you know, I was like, okay, I came back out. I said, mom, if I can come up with the money, can I go to the movies? It's tomorrow evening. If I can come up with the money, can I go? And she was, and I remember her just like, okay, like kind of curious, but you know, what are you going to do here? You know? And that's how I became a drug dealer. No. So <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I grew my empire. Um, so the next morning, it's so it's so stereotypical, but it's so um, like as like the thing for a kid to do. But I'm glad I had this experience. The next morning, I woke up. I had like two bucks, and I remember I got two bucks, and I had a milk jug, a, an empty milk jug. So. I mean, and the gas station I went to, they weren't really running checks. It was like, hey, I need to see if that milk jug is appropriate. They were like, yeah, uh -huh. fill it up. So I went ahead and I put gas in the milk jug and I filled up my gas tank on my, uh, my lawnmower. And I uh -huh. just decided, all right, here I go. And there were only a handful of houses in the neighborhood that would have their lawn mode, you know, but I was like, I gotta, I was just determined. I, I've got to go do this. I, and my mom, uh, I thank her. I thanked her for, she was on the mother's day on two months ago. And I thanked her for giving me that, um, this, that, that confidence and the courage, yeah. uh, you know, and, and the, and the, the freedom, she was like, okay, go, let's see what you can do. And, you know, I went house by house, walked right up in there with a the lawnmower, knock 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 hey how you doing my name's aaron i live down the street this is my and i gave him the story i didn't know if this was gonna i have like sure. I li yeah the, i live down the street my friends they want to go to the movies i want to go but we don't have any money to go to the movies but i don't want any money hand out i want to i want to do something for you i want to mow your yard or rake your leaves. and they were like and you know, it, it took about maybe five i remember going all the way down that one street coming back around i talked to a few people and it's like the fourth or fifth people i actually talked to they the guy looked at me he was like i got a big yard i was like yes sir i know and he was like i need it mowed and raked like absolutely sir he goes okay he's like I'll, I'll go ahead and pay you and i was like cool and i mowed and i mowed the whole thing up and i went and raked it up and i was done raking and he was like i don't know i think you can do a better job on that raking i was like Ugh. Yeah. I, mean, I love that guy now thinking back that he he stick me he kept me to it i was like all right yeah. and i raked it all up i cleaned it all up and uh and he gave me 20 bucks for that you know and i was like that for, i mean we're talking 1995 four yeah. three, something like that 96 20 bucks for a 12 year old you're you're i mean yeah it's a great deal yeah, uh, yeah he got a great deal <laughs> 20 but but i mean i'm just making myself feel back for him it was like 100 i don't know but uh so i went and i i had that i got that money i came back i was like hey mom got got the money she's like where'd you get the money from i was like she's like you got that already i was like yeah i went ahead took care of it and she was extremely happy for me uh and i add that as a job because i continued it so mm -hmm. I continued going I, the, the next day. I, I uh, yeah, it was Sunday, Sunday. I kept going wherever I stopped off. I kept going. And I, over the next, it was through that school year and through the summer towards the end of the summer, I was like, I'm done yeah. Heat in Florida done. I'm like short and chubby, just sweating. I'm like, this is not for me. But, uh, but I, I busted and I had the same guy. I would go back that same first guy, you know, other people would come in and out. Yeah. Some people would come in, but that same guy, the whole time, every two weeks, I would go down there and I'd mow or I'd rake or is well, sometimes once a month. But, but I kept that, I kept doing that for a while. Cool part about all that. Cool. One of the cool parts about all that is that, um, that night I got the money. My mom was super happy and she was excited for me. And I went down to the movie theater 
and everyone else had ten dollars. Like everyone else had ten dollars, and I had twenty. You had twenty, and, fr- and I had twenty. And my friends are like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember they were like, "Oh my goodness, what? Oh, you're gonna buy me?" I was like, "No, no, no! I gotta be. I gotta save my money." <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's when movie tickets were like five bucks, yeah. you know, and like a, a Saturday night. But it, I and I remember I had that last ten dollars or whatever amount that I had, and I gave that to my mom because I was like, "That's you know, what that's yeah. what I felt I needed to do, you know." So, so you learned a couple lessons there, I presume, that like money feels a lot better when you've earned it and it's not given. Yes, <clears throat> right, absolutely. Like, uh, That's a huge one. Yeah, you got to teach my kids that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it, man. How yeah. many kids you have? I have two. I have two boys. Two boys. And, oh, uh, and, yeah. and what are the ages? They are uh, eight and eleven, and they are. I think the older one's starting to get it, but the younger one, they yeah, it's just no concept at all of where money comes from. Man, that's a, it's a hard thing to, because and I and I had this conversation with with a bunch of people, but man, especially when it comes to your kids, you don't, yeah, you know, you want them to, you want to give them what you didn't have, mm-hmm. right? You but did. at the same time, you realize, oh, I learned these valuable lessons because I didn't mm-hmm. have some things, yep, right? That's a crazy balance, you know. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I didn't count it when we were talking about jobs earlier, right? But it's like when I was probably roughly the same age, like 13, 14, I mowed lawns in the neighborhood all summer to earn enough money to buy a modem. Like, that's how nerdy I am. That's what I wanted to buy. I wanted to buy a modem. (laughs) Yeah, I did. (laughs) Yeah. What, what, what speed? Uh, what speed? 1200 baud. I actually posted somewhere. I posted a picture of it recently. It was the Amiga, uh, the Commodore 6180. So it was a 300, 1200 baud modem that you could nice. attach to my Amiga 500. Nice, man. Dude, yeah. you have always been in tech. Even when you yeah. were mowing longs, you were in tech. You yep. were, you were, I'm a nerd. So cool. Yeah. No, that is yeah. really cool, man. Yeah. Just learn, just trying to, trying to instill those things in, um, uh, in kids, man. That's rough. Yeah. Did yeah. you have any other jobs like younger when you were like, uh, no, I mean, I, no, I mowed lawns for a bit and then, uh, started I uh, junior high school. Uh, so 17 doing the, at the working at the ISP. So that was 97, right? I was 17. So, uh, I think we're roughly the same age. I think you may be a yeah, couple yeah. years younger than me, but, uh, same, yeah, same sort of similar, similar sort of time period where, you know, we kind of, we didn't grow up really well off either. We were pretty poor and, used to mow lawns to get money for that. I mowed lawns so I could ride my bike to the pool every, every day in the summer and, you know, just, uh, to do things. But much like you, I did the same sort of thing where for a while I was going door to door and you have to learn. I I forget that lesson, but somebody just reminded me at a conference I was at that, like, no, yes lives in a world of no, Right. Like you can't mm. if you never ask, you can't That's get told. So nice. Yes. Right. So you have right. to accept the fact that the, the, the answer is often going to be no. And uh, you no isn't wrong. It's just information. Right. Like, OK, well, it's bad timing, bad whatever. Right. And that that right. lesson, if you can instill it, it it's very valuable because, man, there's so many cool things that I've done over the years that, you know, I did just by uh, uh, just by asking for somebody if i could do something right that's i love man i love that statement yes lives in a world of no's i'm going to steal that and use that i'll I've, give credit i stole it from a guy named wayne hoffman who's an illusionist mentalist that spoke at a conference i was just at wayne Hoff, I, so you said wayne hoffman i'm gonna I'm, yeah. I'm gonna remember that because i okay. i think it's the same guy i'm thinking of because i was like a magician but no illusionist yeah. Yeah, right, mentalist. Cool. He does all sorts of weird. It was actually a really cool keynote. So, yeah, nice. For what conference? Uh, Ingram Micro Event that just happened last week. That's a you know that's a really cool keynote speaker. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it too. You'd imagine you imagine uh, someone like in the tech realm, but no. Nope. Yeah. No, no. This they had two. The first guy. Uh, so the conference was titled like "Play the Hand You're Dealt." So the first guy was this blind card trick guy, and this guy was amazing. Yes. I know who you're talking about. The older guy? Yeah, the older guy. Uh, So he spoke and he did a whole thing about uh, overcoming adversity, right? Like he's a blind guy that's an amazing card guy. And then the the second, the the end of the day keynote was the uh, mentalist. And oh man, they were both really good speakers, like way above average as far as, you know, conference speakers you tend to get at events like that who tend to be dry, boring and stuffy. 
right that's so yeah. smart as long yeah. as they get the, me the the message across who needs it to be exactly with tech yeah no you know, it exactly. doesn't that is yeah. really cool jason thank you so much man i greatly appreciate what so from your uh from your experience uh that job that you shared what what was it that you gleaned any any life lessons any lessons you yeah. learned test your backups <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, right. It's, uh, that's one of those things that, you know, that kind of instilled in me that, you know, they always assumed they had backups, but they'd literally never tested a restore procedure. So we ran into a bunch of problems with it because there were a lot of assumptions made that definitely didn't hold true. So what should have been a three or four hour restore ended up taking, you know, several days or two days because no one had bothered to test it. And so that's the thing that is that has held me all of this time is that uh, any backup you don't test is just a hope and dream. That's a good one. That's yep. a good one. Look at that. Yeah, that is something that you can take. Look at and now I will. Now I will. Probably the best thing. The man, the thing I learned the most from that job. Oh well, man, uh, the hard work. I think. I think you said. I think you. You hit that. You hit it exactly. Is man, when you work hard for it, it feels so yep. much better. It feel. I mean, I. I've talked about like with, with the um, episode, my mom, I put on some of the jobs I've had there because she had beeper stores and fashion stores. And as a kid, like 10 years old, I was expected to work, like take bill payments, like, like in the cash register and everything. People are like, are you sure he's good with that? You know, so I, I count that. But this was the first time that I went out and like did out on my own. And um, man, yeah, that that's probably the and I, that's why I think that's why I got so happy when you when you chose that one, because it really does. I, I think about that very often, very often, especially when it's when I'm up against like a, a hard project or something crazy. I'm like, man, it's, I'm working hard. It's going to be worth it. It's going to it's going to pay off. So, yeah, Jason, thank you so much for your time, man. I greatly appreciate yeah, that. This, I greatly appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah it was fun, fun, right? Would you come back and be another be a guest again? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I have a, um, I've spent a long time in the industry. I have all sorts of, I have all sorts of IT horror stories I can tell. So, oh man, yeah, I yeah. might, I might hit you. I'm, I'm playing around with this idea of having maybe a string of, uh, of episodes like topic, ba like topic, mm -hmm. uh, based on a specific topic. So I'll throw them out your way whenever I get those, okay. when those cool. thought out. Jason, cool. thank you so much, yeah. ladies and gentlemen out there in computer world. I greatly appreciate you. Thank y'all, and we'll see y'all next time. Peace. See you later. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.